Hey folks, and welcome to the workshop. I'm guessing if you're like me, you've probably got a few of these hanging around, Arduino boards. These are great for controlling a myriad of things, but what if you want to control these precisely from the palm of your hands? Well, I'm going to show you how. Today we're going to take an RC controller like this, and we're going to send signals to our Arduino board. So you're going to need to lay your hands on a few things. First of all, the RC controller. Any standard RC controller will do, from an RC car, an RC plane. You're also going to need the receiver that came with the RC controller. This is the bit that goes on the car or the plane. You're also going to need an Arduino board. Now I'm going to use the 2560, the Mega, because this has got more interrupts and we'll talk more about that later on, but you can use Nuno in a pinch. Last thing you're going to need is a few jumper cables to connect everything together. And I'm going to link below the video everything you're going to need to make this all work. Let's quickly talk about interrupts. An interrupt is basically a mechanism for any attached device to poke the microprocessor in the arm and say, I've got something for you here. Interrupts take quite a lot of resources, so boards only have so many. Arduino have a website that tells you how many interrupts each board has. And Uno only has two pins that can do interrupts, whereas the Mega has six pins that can do interrupts. And you can see the pin numbers there. No matter what board you're using, you can use this guide to tell you which pins you can connect your devices to so you can use interrupts. All right, so now armed with our interrupt pins, we can get started on wiring up the Arduino Mega. So I've got the Mega here, and we now know that pins 18, 19, 20, and 21 are the ones we're going to need to connect to. So we've got four pins to connect here, and we've also got two pins for power for the receiver, this being the receiver. So what I always try and do, so there's, there's a six-wire jumper cable, and what I try and do is find one that's got black and red on the end because it makes it easy, for, or at least black and red somewhere, it makes it easy for me to see where the positive and the ground cables are at all times. So I have the, these six wires that join together uh, and I've got four wires that I'm going to use for my signals and I've got two wires that I'm going to use for my voltage. And as you'll see along here, this has a lot of pins. The way this works is that if you look on this little bit of information here you've got signal positive and ground so every one of these pins has signal positive and ground and if we want to give this some voltage then we only have to plug in one of the voltage and one of the ground pins and actually they're all connected in parallel and so we can just add a black wire to the first one and a red wire to the second one so that's ground and voltage and that will supply all of these inputs with voltage and actually we will supply this unit here with voltage. And then I'm just going to arbitrarily connect each one of these four. So I'll just put the yellow one on pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin four. So providing that I want the inputs from pins one, two, three, and four, I've connected these and they, these are going to go into the inputs on the Arduino Mega. So if we go back to the Mega now, we're going to need to connect those same pins up to pins 18 will go to 1, pins 19 will go to the second channel, got that wrong, pin 20 will go to the third channel and pin 21 will go to the fourth channel. The two extra cables here, the black one will go to ground, and then the red one goes to, I'm plugging mine into 5 volts. You're going to make sure that your receiver will actually take 5 volts. Mine takes 4.6 to 10 volts, so that's why I'm taking mine of 5 volts. So make sure yours doesn't take 3.3 volts, for example. That's all the wiring we need to do in terms of jumper cables. We'll connect the USB cable and that will supply the ball with 5 volts, it will light everything up. And we'll connect this to the computer and we'll give it a go. And just for to explain more, so on this controller, I believe this up and down is channel 1, this is channel 2, this is channel 3 and this is channel 4. So we're going to be able to move both our thumbs and change the signal coming into the Arduino from the receiver. Well that's the plan. Okay, let's waste no more time, let's get straight into the Arduino IDE. I'm going to plug in my Mega. First thing you want to make sure you've done is you've selected Arduino Mega. 
in the board menu and you've also selected the right port so I'm on COM3 make sure you do the same the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a serial port speed just so we know what speed to communicate to the PC because we'll be reading information back so we can plot what's happening on the RC controller I'm also going to set up some variables so the first thing I'm, I care about is how many channels am I going to be looking at and I'm using four receiver pins so I'm going to set four channels we'll get to use this variable um, to track that for those individual channels I'm going to put another block of variables so I'm going to put in four individual variables and that should be able to tell me what my uh, that should store the values for the, the positions of the thumbsticks. So I've got channel 0, 1, 2 and 3 which correspond to pins 18, 19, 20 and 21 and so I guess I better put some variables in here for that as well so here they are. So I now have individual variables to store the values and I have these the pin assignments for each of those channels. So I'm also going to set up, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but I'm going to set up some variables to store information for the start and the end of the pulse widths coming back from the receiver. I'm going to very crudely explain what happens when a signal comes from, from the receiver to the Arduino. So what's sent along that, um, what's sent along that channel is a wave, but it's a square wave. Um, if you imagine this bottom line is 0 and the top line is 1 so it's kind of sending an off and on signal in that on the Arduino pin but the width of this value at the top is actually the data so it's basically saying okay the signals on now and however long it stays on that is going to be the value. So when you move your thumb up, for example, this would become wider. It would be a larger value. And when you pull your thumb down, well, this pulse would then become smaller. So it would be alive for a shorter time. And so what's really important when we're tracking these things is that we, first of all, set a point at which this starts, like our point of origin, and we just control that exact millisecond that happens and then when it ends we want to then do a calculation to say how many milliseconds elapsed in the time it took that to happen so these variables here we have the start of the wave actually in this variable here and then we track the actual value for the pulse width that's the width of that square tooth so that's what these variables are for okay that's it for variables first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the serial port speed so that we can now communicate with the PC that we're connected to. What's then really important is that I set the pin mode to input. So for each one of my pins I'm going to go and make them all input pins. That means Arduino knows that we're actually going to be taking that signal and doing something with it rather than writing out to that pin. And then the next thing I'm going to do is attach an interrupt so this is what we talked about before where we're going to tell the Arduino to listen for any change in signal on that pin. So what we've done here is we've attached an input to a, a digital pin, those pins being 18, 19, 20 and 21 and we've said listen for change, that's what that last parameter means and when you see a change execute one of these four functions and we'll explain that in a second we'll go and write those four functions so it does something with the value from that interrupt actually my bad this belongs up here and this belongs up here so every time we loop our program we're going to read the values for each of the RC channels and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the plotter and you might not use the plotter much if you go to Tools Serial Monitor, that's usually what people use to output text. You can write out from the Arduino and you can see the text on the line. But we're going to use Serial Plotter. It's not often used, but I'm going to show you what it does. I think you're going to find it cool if you've not seen it before. In order to use the plotter, we output numbers separated by commas. So you can see here, I'm outputting the values of each channel separated by a comma. So now what I'm going to do, as I said before, I need to write four functions. So as those interrupts are fired, 
then what I need to do is I need to call function. So they've got kind of a mapping point. So every time one of those functions is called, what it's simply going to do is then call the same function, just to make the code neater. When the interrupt happens on any one of these pins, it's going to go to one of these four, but then each one of these four is just going to call one function. So it kind of maps it back to one point where we can just put this read input. And don't be too intimidated by this. All the code for this is going to be on my website. I'm going to link that right below the video so you can get all this code for free and use it yourself. So here we go. This is the read input. And what this does is it takes a channel. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, or 4. And then it takes the pin. And then it says if it's gone high, then store the microseconds at the point at which it went high. So that stores that point in time at which the sawtooth started, or the square tooth started. If it goes low, that's what else means, high, else, low, then it compares the value between the time right now to when that started, and then it stores that compare value. So we can refer to that, we can read that. So every time it goes high or it goes low, this is going to be called and it's either going to store the start or it's going to compute the end into the length of the pull. And because all that happens very quickly, what we're going to do once every time the program loop, which might not necessarily be at the same time as all the pulses end, we're going to copy all the values that are inside that array into something we can actually use. And while it does that, it stops the interrupts from happening so that it gets the ability to go copy that memory. As I said, don't be too intimidated by it. You can just use this code for free. Okay, and that's all we need to do to go and get some information back from our Arduino. So what we can do right now is we can upload this. Press the upload button. It's going to ask me to save it. It's uploading right now. It's compiling the sketch. Let's make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Okay, it's done. So now I can go to Serial Plotter. And now you can turn on your controller. So I've just turned on my controller and I just nudged the thumbsticks there. So let me do this. Left thumb up, left thumb down is interesting because the wave is kind of inverted left thumb left left thumb right and now I can do right thumb up right thumb down right thumb left right thumb right so those are moving real time is converting those pulses into a value and you see the values aren't zero based they roughly go from I think about 900 to about 1500 but I can now go crazy and move my thumbs and you can see that we're getting an interesting wave pattern as I move my thumbs. Make use of those inputs. You're just going to go and grab the R1 values or R2, R3, R4 values and you can use them however you want. So this is just the beginning. We've managed to receive a signal on our Arduino board. But I think we're going to leave it there today. What I want to do next time is pick up where we left off and we're going to refine that signal. We'll put some dead zone adjustment in there and we'll try and make it go from 0 to 100% maybe rather than coming in at the exact width of the pulse. So stay tuned for lesson 2 and if you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe button and then you can see that video as soon as it's released. As always, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.